What's going on, everyone? Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, we're going to get into solitaire today. And this is kind of piggybacks. Well, not kind of, but it piggy piggybacks off of Khalif Browder um, because one of the main reasons that he went through mental illness and um, had the roller coaster of emotions that he went through is he spent two of the three years that he was on Rikers in solitaire. Um, the average person that's in solitaire, they spend about a month in there, but he ended up spending well over that in two years. So we're gonna get into it. We're just gonna look at some of the numbers, um, just just to kind of add some clarification as to um, how solitaire is being used and what its purposes are supposed to be. So, Scroll down around 80,000 people are in solitary in the US, right? Um, so, in 2014 and 2015, researchers at Yale Law School and the Association of State Correctional Administrators canvassed prison administration in an effort to understand how solitary confinement is used in the US. Results draw from 34 jurisdictions representing 73% of America's incarcerated population found that, near, that roughly 66,000 inmates were in solitary confinement. All right. The Yale study estimated that the solitary population would climb to 80,000 prisoners or about 5% of all prisoners if data was available for inmates in all states and federal facilities. Um, and that still doesn't account for those in solitary and county jails, juvenile facilities, or immigration or military detention. If these facilities were included, the number, be, the number would be even higher. All right, so if you're talking about between male and female, 5% of all male prisoners were in solitary and 2% of all female prisoners were in solitary as well. Um, the U.S. prison population skews male and the solitary population even more so. The Yale study identified close to 60,000 uh, male prisoners in segregated housing across 43 jurisdictions, but only just under 1,500 female inmates. Um, if we look at the numbers racially speaking as well, um, because we already know that black and brown people, even though they're a minority in the United States, they make up most, like they, they make up percentage wise, a larger number of the people that are behind bars. Um, so like, for example, you have 37% um, of prisoners being white from this specific sample that they picked, but only 31% of them are actually in solitaire where you have 40% of prisoners being black and then you have 45% of the times them being black in, in solitaire. So even though there's less, like even though percentage wise, um, there's a certain population of people from the black community, um, the number of times that a person sees solitaire actually is more so than those from the white community, even though the white community is a larger population in general, like out, out of society as a whole, it's a larger population. Um, the Hispanic population, similar to the black community, but not as uh, dramatic, where you have slightly a little more people who see solitaire than, you know, than the average person. If we're looking at states with the most prisoners in solitaire, uh, Louisiana is at the top, Utah, Nebraska, New Mexico, Tennessee, Delaware, New York, Washington, D.C., Florida, and Maryland. And how long the average person spends in solitaire? Um, 15 days to a month, we got 18%. The, the number that pops up the most is one month to three months uh, at almost 30%. And you got three to six months at 16%, six months to a year at 13%, once to three years at 13, three to six, years at 5% and then six plus years at 5%. Now, one thing that's to keep in mind is, for example, you see that the average time is one to three months, which is a pretty long time. Imagine, you know, now we're going through this quarantine where people are supposed to be in their house for who knows how long, right? But people already, you know, started talking about, oh, I'm going crazy, this is too much, and it's only been a week, um, or it hasn't even been the full month yet, but, the people who are in, incarcerated and are put in solitary confinement, 
they got to deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And at the very least, um, somebody who's in quarantine, they get to go to the kitchen, they, go, they get to go to the bathroom. Um, they can actually step outside for quote unquote essential gross, you know, essential things and stuff like that. Where over here, you basically are locked in a in a small square unit uh, for 23 hours a day, and then you only get what you get one hour for rec, um, and that's 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 pretty much it. The United Nations had actually came out and stated that they found that um, solitary used for over a week is equivalent to third world torture. So you could waterboard somebody and you could put somebody in solitary for a week and basically they're both considered torture. Um, so that's, you know, that shows if, if a week is already considered torture, look at how often, you know, same people are thrown into solitary for, for more than a week. States with the most prisoners in solitary for three or more years, Texas is at the top. Massachusetts right after California, Tennessee, South Dakota, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Nebraska, and Washington. Then the types of solitaire, why people are put in there. It could be disciplinary. You know, they got into a fight or something. Um, you know, protective, maybe they need to be in PC, you know, protective custody where, like, it's a known thing. Like, if it's a, a celebrity, maybe they're... Um, <clears throat> the chances of getting attacked might be higher because of the fact that, you know, people know who they are and et cetera, et cetera. And they may, they may be trying to prove a point inside the facilities. Um, percent of guilty offenses resulting in solitary, killing 100% of the times, um, engaging in sexual acts, so presumably rape, possessing a dangerous weapon can land you in solitary, assaulting with serious injury, fighting another person, threatening bodily harm, setting a fire, destroying property, tattooing or self-mutilation that can land you in solitaire, um, escape, possessing stolen property, smoking in unauthorized areas, um, indecent exposure, possessing unauthorized money, misusing authorized medic medication, conducting a gambling pool, dis uh, destroying property, and being unsanitary or untidy. Those things can land you in solitaire, and obviously it shows you at what rate it can. Um, now, in regards to juveniles, um, but just in regards to solitary reforms in general, um, when Obama was in office, he did seek to do so for juveniles, specifically because of the whole Khalid Brada situation. Um, only 71 juveniles are currently in federal custody, according to the DOJ. This was back in 2006. Most of these young people committed crimes on Native American reservations and now incarcerated in contract facilities in the Western United States. Only 13% only 13 juveniles were in restrictive custody last year, according to the um, Federal Bureau of Prisons. Now there were just over a thousand juveniles in state facilities in 2014. Uh, there are another 54,000 in juvenile facilities. So one thing to keep in mind about juvenile suit and juveniles going into their twenties, like mid twenties, is that when you put somebody in solitary, you're basically changing the brain chemistry of that person. Um, the brain starts to deteriorate after a, a week in solitary confinement, um, as per studies and research. And if this is true of a grown man or of a, a fully matured adult, imagine putting a juvenile in solitary that, you know, their brain is still physically changing well into their twenties. You know what I'm saying? So when you put a juvenile in solitary confinement, what you end up doing is um, you you damage the process in which that juvenile is changing and molding into an adult. And now however they're supposed to quote unquote properly function gets, um, gets stunted. Um, and then you end up seeing behavior that a lot of times, uh, often, oftentimes is not reflective of um, what the department would like to see in general. So, um, Apart from this, we pretty much went over some of the statistics. Juveniles, they basically became exempt from, um, from solitaire. People, of course, were, um, they were very worrisome about it, about it because the question is, if we take out solitaire, then what do we have as a weapon against them or as a form of deterrent against them? Um, 
People have sp spoken about taking away visitations, taking away phone calls, which those are better alternatives, of course, than, you know, somebody being thrown into a box that they can't see no sunlight. They can't, like, there's just no form of them being able to grow from it. Um, so at the end of the day, Solid said, like, it's already been proven that even when you put somebody in solitaire, you they could be there for a month and it doesn't necessarily keep them from recommitting the offense. They might actually come back and, you know what I'm saying, be worse than how they originally went in because they accepted this animal-like treatment, essentially. So, But if you have any questions, feel free to email me, let me know, and uh, have a good one.